this demo for the interactive API sandbox on the support center page. This is where you can find the information about the interactive API sandbox, helpful links about our products that are within the sandbox, the ability for yourself to get an API token. This is for a trial token uh, and the information that's included for the trial is right below it. If you already have your own token already, you can definitely jump into the interactive API sandbox. So let's get started with getting a token. I'm going to go ahead and sign up for an account and enter my information here. Add in a little handy dandy password. I'm going to uncheck this box to receive emails because I already received emails, but you can definitely leave this check and please go ahead and enter the information on the right hand side. But let's go ahead and get an we have landed on the API dashboard, which is great. It's within your account and it tells you that you have a free account, the information that's included for the API access, your ability to generate an API token um, and the different plan options that you would like to upgrade to um, would be self-serve subscription or enterprise license and what is included for either one of those plans. So let's go ahead and generate an API token. All right, so this sandbox token is available for a maximum of 30 days. It has an expiration time frame here, and it includes what products that we offer that will be included within this API token and the limits um, that are associated with this token. Once you start using your token, you can then go to this button for a C usage history and check out the history uh, that you did with using your token. I'll definitely show you another way later on in this video. So let's go ahead and take our tokens. Let's copy it to our clipboard and we're going to navigate into the interactive API sandbox. All right. So I just want to let you know that as an admin, I have a little bit of a different view, but you will be landing on this page with getting started with the Regret Interactive API Sandbox. It gives you a lot of information on what is included in the API Sandbox, what's included for the API trial token, as well as, again, the plan options that are available with links to every single product here um, if you would like to learn more about it. And we also include some helpful links and some FAQs that you would like to read over to see, uh, to understand more. So, um, we also include in this sandbox our parcel tiles demo that will be coming soon. Um, so look forward to seeing that. Um, by the time this video comes out, this may be already up and available so you can go ahead and test that out so for now we're going to go ahead and skip this parcel tiles demo and go straight to the endpoints so we have several endpoints here from regrid and we have to search different parcel records we have our collection of searching for our latitude and longitude address search uh, assessor's parcel number as well as the owner's name we also um, have a more powerful endpoint that combines most of these items into its own uh, endpoint, which I'll show you how to use shortly. We also have an address type ahead API. So if you're looking to complete that address when you're searching, we also have that ability. We also include a polygon search endpoint, a post and a get version, additional endpoints for UUID, finding that unique parcel, and a bit of metadata endpoints that include getting the parcel schema, learning about what counties are available within our data, uh, the usage for your token, as well as if you need to report any issues about the endpoints when you're testing it out. So let's go ahead and get started with our latitude and longitude. So with this sandbox, we're gonna have an endpoint path for uh, this, endpoint. It's a URL path. It has some information about the endpoint, some additional links if you're interested in knowing what uh, products that are associated with this data. The options on the right hand side about language, you can choose your language of choice to see 
the snippet of code. So if you want to switch between Node, Ruby, PHP, or Python, and then you are able to enter your uh, token here. I'm going to remove the previous token, but I'm going to go ahead and paste our token that we created just before this. We're gonna, I'm going to enter that here. It then goes and adds our token to the snippet. Um, we're going to also load in some examples. So all of these endpoints um, have examples preloaded in, so you don't have to worry about figuring out which ones, which information to enter. But if you do have your own information, by all means, go ahead and do that. If you are on a trial token, though, it is a subset of the nationwide data. So if you're searching, please make sure you're searching within the counties that are available for your token. So let's go ahead and continue with this uh, latitude and longitude. I'm going to have a radius of 10 meters, and I'm going to limit the results to just return three parcel records for us. I'm going to leave the rest um, just blank. Um, you can fill them in, either true or false, but the default will be false for all of these, and the default will be true for return custom. And we have the option for a 200 or a 401. So we can go ahead and try this out. And excellent, we have a response with our parcel records. And you can see all the information listed here on the right hand side for um, what parcels are located at this latitude and longitude location. And one other thing I would like to show you, we're going to skip the rest of these because they're pretty much similar in regards to filling in the information and trying it out. But one thing I would like to mention is that our query by fields endpoint. This endpoint has an overview of what this includes, the format of how this endpoint is structured, but I have included sample use cases for you to try on how to use this endpoint. So, for example, if you're looking for all the owners of a specific, the owner who owns, you know, several parcels within a certain area, county, zip code, state, etc., uh, you can use this endpoint. I used um, our county, which is a GOID, also known as a FIPS code, and the owner name. I'm looking for all the 7-Elevens in Dallas County. Um, I already preloaded and said that this result should turn 232 7-Elevens in this area, and I'm going to go ahead and test it out. I'm going to use an example here. Here we have the unique format of uh, the parameter, so it should be the field, the attribute name, and an operator, and I'm going to say it's going to equal to 48113. I'm going to preload the 7-Eleven information in here. And I'm going to go ahead and just get the total count. <clears throat> and also, I'm going to restrict this within Dallas, Texas. Um, this is already restricted in Dallas, Texas, as this, this is this, the FIPS code for 48113. But this is just an extra measure. This is not applicable in this scenario, but if you would like to add it, it does not hurt this endpoint. I'm going to go ahead and try it out. All right. And we got a result, 238 7-Elevens. So <clears throat> I previously said 232, and I think that was a typo, but I'll go ahead and correct that. Um, and that is the same for all these use cases. The one thing I will say for this endpoint that is really cool is that this is our nationwide endpoint that searches across the United States. And the reason why it took a little bit longer than our other endpoints is because it's going through that nationwide data. In regards to our latitude, our search by endpoints, these are specific to an area. Um, as as you may know, it's an address or, um, well, parcel name, the such as parcel number and owner name um, is also searching nationwide as well. But this one, by far is the best one for query by fields using multiple parameters that you can use to get the information that you need. One other thing I would like to show is our polygon endpoint. We have two versions, a post and a get. In the get version, um, we have a 
GeoJSON polygon shape already defined. If you would like to try your own GeoJSON polygon shape, you can go to geojson.io to create your own polygon shape unless you already have a map layer that can already do that for yourself. I'm going to go ahead and limit this to five. Um, actually, let me go ahead and not limit this and I will get the count for how many parcels are within this polygon shape. And there are 38 and it also includes the acres within this polygon shape the square meters within this polygon shape as well as the square miles within this polygon shape so there's quite a lot of information here um, just for the count version but uh, if you don't want to use the count and you um, just want the parcels then you don't need to use this uh, attribute I mean this parameter and that is it. Um, oh, actually, one more thing I meant to show you about the usage. So in regards to the usage, um, you can go ahead and take your and your token that, that is already loaded into the authentication section and go ahead and get a full history of your usage. So, so far, I've did three requests and had one result. That one result means that for every time I use count parameter that does not count as results because I'm just getting a count this value increments when parcel records are returned so it is one um, and it has a full history of using this token and since we're just using this for today today is the April 28th um, it has the information for today all right, so that is it for a walkthrough of how to use the interactive API sandbox, how to get your token. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us at help at regrid.com. Thank you.